The Reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jesse travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you, Brother Ford. Hebrews 12 and verse 14. Follow as pursue, hot pursuit. I deal with that last night. I'm not going to review. With peace, with all men. Don't you know our, our state should be tranquil? And holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Now, I told you last night, we're not so much as talking about going to heaven as we are as talking about seeing the miracles, seeing the glory, seeing the power, seeing the demonstration, seeing the manifestation of glory in our lives. Let's go to, let's go to John 14 so I can keep this homiletically uh, accurate. Because I'm about ready to just take off. I got that black hawk on me tonight. Just get up and go. John 14, 21. The Bible says, he that hath my commandments and keeps them. How I many know keep them don't mean hold on to them, it means apply them, do them, walk in them, obey them. He it is that loveth, note that ETH, that keepeth, you keep, when you keep doing it, he show you, he show you in love with me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. He that keepeth them is he that loveth me, and the one that keepeth them, that's the one that's loving me, he shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and they get put that same I in there. I will manifest myself to him. So I've talked about consecration. I've talked about sanctification. Tonight, I want to talk about manifestation. Jesus, I'm going to manifest what? Myself to him. You know, it's one thing to have him to reveal this and reveal that, but he's like, I'm going to reveal myself to you. I'm going to manifest myself to you. Judas said, look here, Lord, wait a minute. This is not, uh, not Judas Iscariot. He said, Lord, how is it? How you going to do How that work? You're going to manifest yourself to us and not unto the world. Now, you got to understand this. You got to wrap your mind around this situation. You got to go there mentally and realize Okay, this got to be more than what I'm thinking manifestation is because I'm looking to the man, the man, listen to the man talk. I, I already see it. So you're telling me you finna show me something, you finna reveal something about yourself to me. In other words, if, if, if the world walking here right now, they can see you like I can see you, but you're telling me there's another level, there's another dimension, there's another manifestation that you finna bring forth, and I'm going to see it, and they're not going to see it, how that's going to be. Jesus answered and said, if a man loves me. Notice it, now, now, I know he's talking about if you love me, he will keep my words. But this, this right here is bringing us into an intimate walk. This is more than just, oh, I love you, Jesus. No, he's talking about when you really love me, you walk in reverence and respect to me. He said, so this, this, this walk, this manifestation I'm talking about, I hate to tell you, but it ain't going to happen for everybody. He said, but if a man loves me, he will keep my words. Notice it, it keeps going back to love and obedience. And my father will love him and will come unto him. And watch this now. My, now, he done told you, I'm going to manifest myself to you. But now he said, my father will love him. And we, me and the father, will come unto him and make our abode. This is not going to be a passing thing. This is not going to be an event. This ain't going to be a moment. This is about to create a season in your life where the father. Now, we know that's going to happen by way of the Holy Ghost. So we got the Godhead on the inside of us now that's about to break forth in a way that we haven't known. Now, he said, here the word manifest here means to exhibit in person or to disclose by words. See, that's come a revelation of God from God. That's going to come a revelation of God from the word of God that we, we haven't had. We've had the word of God. we preached the word of God. We've taught the word of God, studied the word of God, but there's more in the word of God than we've ever seen or ever known before. And Jesus Christ is letting us know when we walk in this intimate relationship, this face-to-face -face intimacy, let God into me see I become transparent before God, nothing to hide. I'll put everything 
everything on the altar. And he said, now when you do that and then I hear you and I do exactly what you tell me without reservation, he said, I'm going to show up. I'm going to rise up. I'm going to reveal and manifest and just exhibit. I'm going to go to an art exhibit. I'm going to put myself on exhibit. I'm going to put myself on display for that person. Watch this. It means to exhibit in person or disclose by words. It means to appear, to declare plainly. I mean, though the Bible says in the last day, the spirit speaks expressly. Aren't you tired of dark sayings? You be praying and you get a word. You need a sentence and you only got a word, you know. Come on. But God, I'm going to show myself. It means to inform, to manifest, to show. And then I'm going to begin to signify. God's going to begin to show us a thing. Now go to 1 Samuel 3. We started there the other night. And I want you to know, kind of look at the, kind of, kind of, kind of look at it. I'm kind of flowing tonight because I got this utterance going. So, uh, 1 Samuel 3, we'll get to the verse that I'm going to read in a minute while you turn in there. But you know the story. Samuel been dedicated. He's in the temple. He's working with Eli. God visits Samuel. The word of God is precious in this day. The word of God is it's a rare thing to get a word. The word is value. Don't you wish the word had value in it today to the average Christian? I'm not even talking about ungodly people. But then the, the, the voice of God began to speak to this lad that had not yet knew God. The word wasn't revealed to him. Now, catch those two things. We're looking for manifestation, but we need to know God, and we need a revelation of the word of God that only comes from the spirit of God, and we need a revelation of the spirit of God that's only accurate through the word of God, because only the word of God can reveal God to us, and only God can reveal the word to us, for Jesus who was the word said, no man can come to me except the Father draw him, but no man knows the Father, come on here, except him who the Son will reveal him to, so we're in a time now of manifestation, but we cannot disconnect from the word and the spirit in this hour. So he, he, he begins to speak to this boy one time, two times, three times, and the boy don't get it. And finally his mentor tells him, oh, my God, I proceed, boy. This is God calling you. So go back, and if he comes back again and speaks, say, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. Hallelujah. Now, he didn't say, I'm listening. He said, I hear. And then God stood. So now we've got the presence of God as manifestation, as appearance, and the voice of God together. We've got the word and the spirit. And how many know when God shows up, he don't show up in a silhouette. He shows up first person. So God is now here to reveal the will of God to this young man. This is a lad. This, this boy is not some veteran. Come on. But his word is revealed by God and is so accurate that when he gets up and speaks, even though it's a hard word, the man of God says, I receive you. I know it's God. So now we're in verse 20. And all Israel from Dan even to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of God. How many know we got a lot of folk that say they prophets today? We got a lot of folk with titles. We got a lot of folk with a title that's not in the office. But God said, I know how to validate what I initiate. Come on now. And the Lord did what? appeared, manifested again, and that's why I did the part of manifestation meant to appear. See, that's why I want to read the definition first. So God appeared, he revealed himself, he manifested again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself, manifested himself to Samuel in Shiloh. How? By the word of the Lord. That's coming a manifestation, but it's gonna come by the word. What read them where I'm happening on this tonight? Because I've been in a I've been in short moves of God, bursts of seasons where when the manifestation came, they begin to toss the word. I knew men who read whole chapters, who preached whole chapters. I'm talking about they didn't pick out a verse, they kept the content and they would break it down and they would preach whole chapters, but then all of a sudden the glory started to fall and the word became less and less important. And guess what happened after a a short season, the glory was gone because it's the word that sustains the glory because it's the word that keeps you accurate when there's a move of God beyond the norm. You can always in your private time, face to face, along with God, God to reveal because the word in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And just like God don't change, come on, he's still the same. And we're going to first John, uh, first John 3 and 8. I, I know I can quote it, but I want you to kind of look at things. You might want to bookmark it, you might want to highlight it because we're a time now when God's trying to show us the why behind. There's a manifestation of the things that God said. God said, 
this would be a year of fulfillment. You know, we started raising the money to buy these chairs four years ago. Hallelujah. And, and, and then it just stopped. We got almost there and it just dried up, praise the Lord. But hallelujah, all of a sudden when this year came, then just, I mean, unsolicited, nothing made. Now, you know, see what, what we've done. We kept that prayer going. We kept the intercession going for the thing. And then, bam, hallelujah, they showed up. Come on, now the money came and there was no strain to do it. And, and now, amen, the rest of it came and it's the here now. And I want you to understand that awning you saw out there when you came in the door, that carport, amen, five years, four years ago when the man told me he was going to purchase it for me, it was going to be a little six-foot awning. That's all it was going to be, a six-foot awning over the door. For four years, he said, I ain't forgot your honey. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I haven't forgot. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Now, I don't ask him about it. Every year, he would say, I haven't forgot it. Two months ago, he told me, I got the money. He said, I got a particular amount of money, which is 20. It was it was $500 less than what it cost to put it up there. And he said, that's what I'm going to pay for it. When the man came out here, he said, no, it's going to cost uh, $3,380. $3, so the man had $2,800. $2, and so he told me, he said, well, you know, if you want to contribute something to it. So I just looked at him and said, praise the Lord. And so, I, you know, I, <laughs> you told me you were blessing me. Now I said, I got to make a contribution. And so he, he, he went on and he said, well, I'm going I'm to get it done. He said, because I want to do an 18 by 18 carport because I don't want Miss Jess to have to get out in the rain when the rain going on. So then he said, I'm going to ask a couple of friends of there if they want to sow the other. And so I said, praise the Lord. Because, you know, I'm like, when God tells you to do something, I ain't going to tell you how to do what God told you to do. It took you four years to even step out. But then all of a sudden he came back. He said, look at here. I'm believing God for this right here and I want you to he said I believe that this seed of this carport is going to release what I'm believing God for the next week he said you know what he said I was talking to God and asking him who could I ask and God said I told you to do it yeah, and listen this is prophet Ford I want to invite you to our year in revival at Zoe Bible Church 1209 Prep Road at 7 p.m. each night is going to be December 28th 29th and 30th. Make plans now. You've got plenty of time to invite a friend, a neighbor, get your babysitter, whatever you need to do, but you don't want to miss this year's Year in Revival at Zoe Bible Church, 1209 Pratt Road. Remember, that's December the 28th, the 29th, and the 30th, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. So grab your praise partner, come and share a miracle. God bless you. See you there. I'm going somewhere with this. So he said, okay, God, I'm going to do it. So he talked to his wife, and they went on and did it and called the man out here. And when we closed last month, they came out the next week and put it up. And here's what he told me. Hey, man, they got it. Said, I went on vacation and came back. And then when I saw him, he said, man, you know what? He said, remember when I told you God told me to build that? He said, when they got that thing finished and came by and looked at it, and, and you gave them, because what he did, he gave the check to the minister so he could get his right off so that we could write the check. He said, from the day you put to check in their hand. He said it was seven days my money was loose. What I was believing, so I got my first check. So I'm trying to tell you, it was fulfilled, it was manifested, but his seed initiated it. Now understand, God told him four years ago, and because he didn't do it four years ago, it went from six foot to 18 by 18. You got to understand the fulfillment, the year is happening, and God, I'm just watching God. I told you, hallelujah, a man walked up to me and said, God told me to ask you, what do you need? And I said, well, what, what I need is $2,200 to take care of this. He wrote the check. Hallelujah. Then another man came to me uh, two days ago and said, uh, he said, I've been wrestling with this for two months. Two months. He said, hey, this is the biggest seed I ever saw, man. He said, but the Holy Ghost won't leave. He said, I didn't try to justify it, you know, and it wouldn't go through. He said, but God wouldn't leave me alone. So here's a check for you and your wife for $3,500. Come on. So we're, hallelujah. Now you got to understand something. Now I'm we, but we, we've been believing God to replace the whole, whole um, uh, heating unit in our house, the whole front is everything. And so then the man told me, he said, well, I'll tell you what, he said, we'll do, we'll just do everything. We'll, we'll rerun the duct work, get the ducts from under the house, put them through the attic and just do everything over. And with, with the 2200 and the 3500 and then he said, now he's going to do it. Now, you got to understand, when I tell you it's $6,300 to get it done, but when I had another company to come out and investigate the same thing and, and, and give me uh, what you call that thing, an appraisal, what they would do for it, an uh, estimate, that's what I'm looking for. An estimate, they said 22000 for the same work. 
22,000. God said, I can get it done for 6,300. Come on. And then going to get, and I already know now he didn't gave me 3,700. The other 600 is coming. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no sense in me sitting around. Well, where? And, and the guy said, when I had the 2,200, he said, well, you know, you could do the 22 and then finance the rest. I said, yeah, I could finance it all if I wanted to. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't trying to finance it. I'm, tr I'm trying to finance it, but I ain't trying to finance it. You understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to finance it, but not in the Babylonian system. I'm trying to finance it with the kingdom system. But the thing is, I'm trying to get you to understand, I ain't raised no offering for it. Come on now. We just went in prayer. Y'all remember that I told you in prayer. Let's pray about this. And see, God is turning a thing, and things are happening now. It's been, it's been taking a long time, but God said, now I'm accelerating the thing because it's a season of manifestation. That's why I want you to see your manifestation is tied to your consecration, your sanctification. You can't be playing with the world. Come on now. And then think the kingdom going to break loose in your life. And then, now he brings it down a little closer. It's coming down to your love and your obedience. That's the commitment of 1 John 3 and 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Now let's just change that word committeth. He that practices sin as his general way of life. He who has a habit, who, who, who he who habitually sins on a regular basis is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning for this purpose. For the purpose of the fact that the devil sinned from the beginning, and whoever practices sin is of the devil. If for this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. That means to dissolve, to loosen, to do away with. But the word manifested here, hallelujah, means to make manifest or visible, to make known what has been hidden or unknown. How many know back in the Garden of Eden, God told the devil, by, and I know the law of double reference. He was talking to the serpent, but he was talking to the demon behind the serpent. And he said, the seed of woman, which she don't have. So he's talking about the son of God. He said, he is coming and you're going to bruise his heel, but he's going to bruise. It means to bust your head. Come on now. You got to understand that the Bible tells us in Galatians that in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son made of a woman. They go to see the woman and he come for this purpose is to destroy, to loosen, to dissolve the works of the devil. As holy as you've been living, as as consistent as you've been tithing, yet there are some demonic works in your life. But I came to tell you that this is a season, a manifestation, where Jesus is about to show up on your behalf and bust the devil's head. Come on. And destroy the very works of the devil. You got to understand, we're in a season of accomplishment. We're in a season of fulfillment. We're in a time now when God is trying to show up in our behalf in a way where we ain't got to try to create a testimony. We ain't got to try to fake it till we make it. It's going to be what it is. It's going to be real. Come on, visible. What's this? Let me read the definition again. To make manifest or visible or known what has been hidden or unknown. To manifest whether by words or deeds or in any other way to expose, to view, to show one. Jesus is about to show up and show himself and reveal his. Remember Peter and John, they were ignorant and unlearned, but people looked at him and said they'd been with Jesus. Come on. And now listen here. It, it, it wasn't because they was walking with him at that time because he already went back to heaven. But there was such a glory in their lives. And I go to the book of St. John chapter 9. I want you to understand this is a season, a manifestation. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But Jesus came long before the cross. He started demonstrating the power of God that busts the devil's head. How many know what Peter, James, and John caught a hold to? Wasn't the cross. They caught a hold to him demonstrating the power of God walking in the earth. Hallelujah. And they know what that did? It gave them enough boldness to face their cross. If you read history, when, the, when Andrew, why do you think the St. Andrew's cross is an X-shaped cross? Because Andrew told them, I I ain't worthy to die on the same cross my Lord died on, but they had to make his cross a different way. When Apostle Peter, hallelujah, was crucified, he said, turn my cross upside down. Why? Because he didn't count himself worthy to go out the way Jesus did, yet he wasn't scared to go out. He said, for God I live and for God I'm glad to die. Come on, we're in a time now, we got a generation, we bowl with a microphone until we get threatened. This is Prophet Ford, and I want to invite you to join me for the revival, opening up 20. 21. That's right. Our annual revival at the International House of Praise this year will be January the 4th through the 6th. Now, we're doing something a little different this year for the first time. Amen. And this is the 17th revival. This is the first time we're going to be starting at 6 
p.m. You heard it right. You know, it gets dark early anyway, so you, you'll you be able to get there and enjoy yourself. So right after work, you just got to tell your praise partner to ride with you and come straight on the service. And we'll be at 4511 Fawcett Road at the International House of Praise. That's January 4th, 5th, and 6th, 4511 Fawcett Road in Pine Bluff, Arkansas at the International House of Praise with Prophet Willie and Lady Carla Edwards. I want you to make plans to join us. Going to kick off 2021 with a move of God. You need to be there to hear what thus saith the Lord. God bless you. I'm looking forward to seeing you at 4511 Fawcett Road, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Don't miss it. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was what? Born blind. Ain't never been nothing but blind. All they ever known is blind. How I many know when you born blind, you've been blind all your life. You don't know anything about light. You can smell fragrances, but you don't you don't have a mental image of a color. If somebody tell you the flower is purple, you can't see purple. Come on. They tell you, amen, that this, this flower here is orange and you can't see it. They say this one here is brown and yellow, but you don't have an image. You've never seen it. So I want you to understand that his his brain wasn't able to figure this out, but yet his disciples asked him, saying, Master, teacher, who did sin? In other words, who missed the mark? Who messed up uh, this man or his parents that he was born blind? That tells you that they believe either you or your parents could do something that will put you in a dilemma. Jesus answered, neither. Have this man sinned, nor his parents. I want to pause right there. See, some of the trash in your life ain't your fault. Some of the mess you're going through ain't got nothing to do with what you have done. You did nothing to merit it, yet the devil tries to make you feel like, well, this happened to you because you such and such. Are you not this and you ain't that? If you was doing thus and so, no, 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 no. See, some things is just the devil. Some things is just life. Some things like a birth defect. Ain't nothing, nothing. the mama did everything right, had all the prenatal care, but yet some, some chromosomes didn't show up. Come on. Yet, sir, you got to understand it ain't nothing wrong with you. God loves you. You love God. It's validated. But the devil tries to intimidate you with the fact if you really was walking. Now, the Bible, now that's when he quotes the Bible to you. The Bible said, now, if you obey God, the fruit of your womb going to be blessed. So just the fact that your baby has got downs, you must not be obeying God. No, no, you got to no, don't fall for that trash. You got to know, devil, you's a liar and the father thereof. And this too is going to pass because greater is he that's in me than he is in the world, and my God is going to diminish this thing. So he said, now, neither this man nor his parents, but that the works of God may be made manifest in him, I must work the works. See, most folks think that he said, this is happening to him so God can show his glory. Now, if you follow that line of thought, then you would say that Jesus said, oh, that he didn't see and God made him blind so he could heal him. Because God wanted the world to know he could heal the blind. That's just stupid. That ain't what God was saying at all. He said, you know, he said he didn't sin, his parents didn't sin, but I got to work the works of God while it is day. Because when the night come, came on, man, he said, so, but I want you to catch this word here. I must, the work the, uh, the works of God must be made manifest. Because I'm talking about manifestation tonight. Uh, and I want you to know in this season, the works of God must be made manifest. If you read Matthew 4 and 23, the Bible says Jesus went about preaching. Uh, he went about teaching, preaching, and healing. Uh, that was his forte. He was teaching, preaching, and healing every manner of sickness and every manner of disease. So then teaching, preaching, and healing is the very works of Jesus. And Jesus said, the works that I do, shall you do. And he said, the works of God has got to be made manifest. Can I tell you there's a level of teaching that's about to hit this planet that we ain't never heard before. There's a level of preaching that's about to hit this planet that's going to be simply irresistible. The Bible says he chose the foolishness of preaching to save the lost. And that's coming forth voices under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about revival going to break out where we ain't just going to have 100,000 in a field. We're going to have men and women of God that's going to speak a word and God going to amplify their voice like he did John the Baptist and the whole city going to be saved. The whole city, go, nation is going to turn to God. It's going to be a wave. That's going to be a move. That's, the Bible said the whole earth shall be filled with his glory. Well, if God can fill the earth with his glory, can't he fill a nation? Can't he fill a city? He ain't just got to fill a 
church of auditorium. I believe, hallelujah, there was a revival that broke out in Argentina because me and prayed and believed God. If God did it then, he can do it again. Come on, Tommy Hicks ain't the last one that can have a nation shaking revival. Hallelujah. The Bible says, you got to understand, Jesus said, the works I did shall you do. Plus, come on now, greater works than these. And we in a season a manifestation. Hallelujah. We're going to see the works and we're going to watch the works elevator. We're going to see the works and we're going to watch the works escalator. We're going to see the works and we're going to watch the works multiplied because this is a season of manifestation. See, you got to understand, we're Western minded. We read our Bible, and all we know is what we see. When you look at the Hebrews, when Jesus began to speak, you know what? We're looking at the Son of God. They're looking at the Messiah. When Jesus says certain things in your mind, you can't figure out, why them Pharisees acting a fool? Because this boy came out of Galilee, and ain't no prophet never came out of Galilee. And everything he is saying, they know he is speaking me messianic. He is, what is what is stone him. He's trying to make God his daddy. He know where they say, ain't no, ain't no dog out of Galilee. This, this, this can't be the Messiah. They even got mad at Nicodemus. They said, boy, search the scriptures. See, you got to follow. They said, go search the scriptures. You ain't nowhere in the scripture where no prophet came out. They didn't know he came out of Bethlehem and went back to Galilee. So I'm trying to tell you, they was trying to find, they was trying to identify this Messiah. Okay, when Jesus goes by the grave tomb, hallelujah, and raise up Lazarus after four days, what do we think? What have we always been taught? That the Jews had a custom that the spirit hovered over the grave for three days and on the fourth day if you could raise the dead it was a miracle but when you really understand the Jewish custom the Hebrew custom what they really were said only the Messiah could raise the dead after four days so when Jesus came in on the fourth day and they said could not this man have raised that healed the blind could not he have healed this man but when he told him to come forth on the fourth day they were scratching their head because they said oh my god this, 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 this is the Messiah look at here. Remember the lady with the issue of blood? She touched what? The hem of his garment. That's why I got on my leave tonight. Hallelujah. The sheet. Listen here. You got five knots and eight strands. Hallelujah. That's 613 laws. That's what these tassels represent. But on the corner of this to leave. Listen, this is Prophet Ford, and I want to encourage you uh, to sow your year in seed. Amen. We haven't um, come to you in a couple of years to ask you to do so, but this year, as we come to the close of 2020, I'm asking you to sow a year in seed. Pray about it. Ask God what he would have you to do to sow to offset things for next year. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, when you sow your seed, you don't know what evil is coming up on the earth, but that seed becomes a hedge to prevent that misfortune. So I'm asking you now, you've got time. Pray about it. Ask the Lord what he would have you to sow. Get your seed in the ground. And right now, you know, you still get your tax deduction for that. Amen. We still have the 501c3 capabilities here, but I want you to seek the faith of God and ask him what he would have you to sow. Because remember, a significant seed always produces a significant harvest. Make your checks payable to ROG Ministries. The address is on the screen. It's P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas 72216. Also, Cash App is on the screen. It's dollar sign, Reality of the Gospel 1. Uh, you can just, you know, put the check in the mail or do it on Cash App. However you choose to do it, sow your seed. Remember, name your seed so you can claim your harvest. And I believe the harvest and angels are go to work with you to help you reap your hundredfold because you're sowing for the gospel. God bless you. And remember, as always, Jesus will pull you through if you can stand the pull. You have been encouraged through the uncompromising message that you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, send $8 for compact disc or $20 for video to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640-91, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you would like to become a partner with this ministry, you may do so by joining the Ally 200 Club at $25 a month, or you may become a Truth Ally for $10 or more each month. Send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's word, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free.